مسجد فرج الإمام صاحب العصر والزمان صلوا على محمد وآل محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد فاتحة قل ربي أعوذ بك من همزات الشياطين وأعوذ بك ربي أن يحضرون بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي أنزل القرآن الكريم والفرقان الحكيم على النبي الحليم الذي هو على خلق عظيم وجعله الدليل على خير سبيل وكتابا فيه تفصيل وبيان وتحصيل ظاهره أنيق وباطنه عميق لا تحصى عجائبه ولا تبلى غرائبه والصلاة والسلام والتحية والإكرام على من أرسل حجة للعالمين وكان نبيا وآدم بين الماء والطين سيدنا ونبينا وشفيعنا وحبيب قلوبنا وطبيب نفوسنا أبي القاسم محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المنتجبين المكرمين الفاضلين الحمد لله الذي جعلنا من المتمسكين بولاية سيدنا ومولانا وإمامنا ومقتدانا أمير المؤمنين علي بن أبي طالب عليه الصلاة والسلام أما بعد فقد قال الله العظيم في كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والذين لا يشهدون زورا وإذا مروا باللهو مروا كراما والذين إذا ذكروا بآيات ربهم لم يخروا عليها صما وعميانا والذين يقولون ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين واجعلنا للمتقين إماما أولئك يجزون الغرفة بما صبروا ويلقون فيها تحية وسلاما آمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم والسلام عليكم جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته. First of all, I would like to thank you all for inviting me again. One of these days, I feel I'm going to show up, and you will have moved and not told me. That's the only way you can get rid of me from coming here. Never happened. And I and I am sorry. I think maybe it's better to have more of the poetry than have me sit up here for sure. Uh, you hear me enough. <laughs> and really this is the love of Imam Ali that comes, isn't it? And, and I will say this, um, uh, today I'm, I'm very embarrassed because we have our brothers here, Brother Mustafa, Brother Mahmoud, who's sitting here, look at the colors you are wearing. I will, say, I will say this, I am not man enough to wear this. This is about as bright as I will get. <laughs> Like the green uh, here and the pink and the red, mashallah. Only the love of Imam Ali can do this for you, right? Salawat ala Muhammad. This is a day, the 13th of Rajab, that you celebrate with the loudest of your voice. Because I wish, and I, you know this, there's nothing I will tell you that you don't know. But the wilaya of Amir al Mukminin Ali ibn Abi Talib is a very big thing. It is not a small thing. And if you read from our scholars, our history, the riwayat, the traditions that have come from the Ahl al-Bayt, explaining even the Qur'an al-Kareem, how much the Qur'an speaks about wilaya. It is not one ayah or two ayahs. It is immersed in the Qur'an, the wilaya of Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib. And brothers and sisters, Brother al Faqar was reading uh, the poetry, and even talking about how there are those who say, well, look at the Shia of the Ahl al-Bayt. And na'udhu billah, they say these things that, oh, the Shia, they love Ali more than Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. They love Ali. Ali, some even say, na'udhu billah, that Ali is God. There are so many things that they say. But I will tell you a story that you all know that will show you what Ali is and how he is with respect to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And what we feel about Ali ibn Abi Talib In the battle of Safin In the battle of Safin Imam Ali alayhi salatu wassalam He is standing with his soldiers You know this, you know the history I won't tell you the history In front of him Muawiyah la'anatullahi Ali 
Now all of the people have gathered and his soldiers are ready. But you know, Imam Ali does not want to engage. He will never be the first to fight. When the assault from the enemy begins, Imam Ali alayhi salatu was salam, he salawat I told you, we need more poetry. This is a sign. This is going to drown me out and we'll start the poetry and no problem. So now Imam Ali alayhi salam, he gives the command that the raya the standard now has to come forward, someone has to lead the charge. So when he gives the command, you know who comes forward to lead the army? Al Hassan ibn al Hussein alayhi salam. Now, Al Hassan ibn al Hussein, these are the sons of Ali ibn Abi Talib, they go forward. Ali ibn Abi Talib immediately, Imam Ali alayhi salatu wa salam, he calls his, his generals and he says, No, no, call them back. I don't want them going forward. I don't want them going forward. Come back. Tell them to come back. So the gent, they go, they tell Al Hassan and Hussein, no, your father says come back. Don't lead the way. Your father wants you to come back. Instead, Imam Ali, once they come back, he calls Muhammad al Hanafi. And he says, My son Muhammad, take the standard, go forward. Now, Muhammad al Hanafi, they describe, he goes forward, but the onslaught of the spears and the enemy he sees, he's having difficulty. He is having difficulty. So the people, they come to Imam Ali, they say, Ya <coughs> in everything we have heard the name of Al Hassan and Al Hussein, Al Hassan and Al Hussein. Rasulullah had said, These grandsons of mine, he talks about them, he carried them on his back. In everything we talk about Hassan and Hussein, when they went forward, Ya Amir al Mu'mineen, why did you call them back all of a sudden and put Muhammad al Hanafi in? Why? <coughs> Imam Ali, he says, Do you know why? He said, because Al Hassan and Al Hussein, they are the sons of Rasulullah Muhammad Al Hanafiya is my son. I cannot risk them going forward. Imam Ali alayhi salatu was salam, he says, Ana abdun min abid Muhammad. I am one of the servants of the many servants of Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There is no way we will ever consider that Imam Ali is superior to Rasulullah, bigger than Rasulullah, no. There is one Rasulullah, Khatim al-Anbiya, one Habib Allah. But what we say is that the nafs of Rasul, dam of Rasul, lahm of Rasul, ruh of Rasul, that is Ali ibn Abi That piece of Rasulullah. And today, brothers and sisters, and I promise you I won't go long, because coming in you made the big mistake of making barbecue. <laughs> So I have to eat and I love barbecue. So 15 minutes, I'm finished, I'm going for barbecue. I don't know about you. I will have to jump over you, I'll get them, inshallah. We are, we are in a world where there is so much <clears throat> disturbance. And much of the disturbance is coming at the name of Islam. If you see the life of a, Imam Ali alayhi salatu was salam, who did he fight? Did he fight Kufar after Rasul was gone? Was there battles with Kufa? No, battles were with the Khawarij in Nahrawan. The battles with other Muslimin in Jaman. The battles with, were with so-called Muslimin at Safin. Who was he fighting? He was not fighting idolaters. He was fighting his own people, his own Rasul's community. So we see that even now, what has happened? That the greatest fight, Muslim is killing Muslims, so-called Muslim. And that's why Quran always makes a difference between that person who says he is Muslim by tongue and that person who is truly a Muslim. And even the ayahs of the Quran, they relate to the ayahs that I read for you of the Holy Quran from Surah Al-Furqan. And it's long ayahs describing those who are believers. There is a difference between a Muslim and a Mu'min, brothers and sisters. And I've been talking about this for the last few days in, in the Ayat Center as well. But for us to understand, by saying Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa anna Muhammadan Rasulullah does not make you a mu'min. It makes you a Muslim by name. It means that someone meets you, they say salamu alaykum to you. They come, they can eat your food from your house. There are certain rights and uh, things that go along with this. But this does not make you a mu'min. It does not mean that the faith has come into your heart. And that's why the ayahs of the Quran, they describe the mu'mineen. وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَشْهَدُونَ زُورَ وَإِذَا مَرُّوا بِاللَّهْوِ مَرُّوا كِرَامًا 
But those people who don't listen to any of the, the idle talk, and if they come in front of frivolity, they pass away with honor. They pass away from it with honor. And I, I ask you that tonight, when I say these things, think of one person and one person only, and that is Amir al-Mu'mineen, Ali ibn Abi Talib, alayhi salatu wa salam. The ayah of the Quran, it says, وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِّرُوا بِآيَاتِ رَبِّهِمْ لَمْ يَخِرُوا عَلَيْهَا صُمًّا وَعُمْيَانًا those people, the believers, not Muslims, mu'min. Believers are those who when Allah's sign is in front of them, they don't become deaf and blind. They pay attention to the sign of Allah. They are always paying attention to the sign. And that's why even Al Imam Al Rada alayhi salatu was salam, he has said, Innam al Iman Aflam min al Islam bidaraja. Iman faith is better than Islam by one degree. That means a Muslim by name is not the same as a Mu'min. Mu'min is very different and it all comes down to action, brothers and sisters. Because a Muslim will say things with his tongue, but he may not follow it with his actions. But a believer, a Mu'min, is someone who says something, believes something in his heart, and his actions will show. Always. The actions will show. They say, uh, and you know this, that in the Battle of Khandaq, that when Umru came across the trench, into Medina, and he challenged. He said, if you read the history, he was so defiant. He said, um, I have heard from you preaching, from your prophet preaching, that um, you will go to Jannah if you are killed, fighting in the way of your God, and your killer, your enemies will be sent to hell. He said, which one of you wants to come here? I'll send you to Jannah. Look at how arrogant he was. You see, Amir al-Mu'minin stands up. He says, Ya Rasulullah, ana lahu. I will take him. Rasul says, Idris, ya Ali, Idris, sit down. Again he calls, and he says, who will come and fight me? Amir al-Mu'mineen, he says, Ya Rasulullah, I will go fight him. I will go fight him. Again Rasul says, Idris, ya Ali, sit down. And again the third time, and again Amir al-Mu'mineen gets up and says, Ya Rasulullah, give me permission to go fight this man. They say, Rasulullah, he says, Ya Ali, do you know that this is Umar ibn Abdullah? He says, Ya Rasulullah, but I am Ali ibn Abi Talib. Wow. Rasulullah, he gives him uh, the shield. He gives him his shield, it's called Gul Fudul. He takes the shield, he says, Ya Ali, take the shield. He takes the amama, puts the amama on Imam Ali's head. And as he starts to walk, he starts to go towards Umar to fight him. What does Rasulullah say? He says, Baraza al-Imanu kullu ila shirk kullu. Here goes all of Iman fighting against all of Shirk. That is Ali. All of Iman is now going to fight. Now, was it just because Imam Ali said the words? No, he put his life forward immediately. Is there any... And, and Hajj Ali asked the question that who was the one who slept in the bed? <coughs> who was the one who slept in the bed? And really, uh, to the kuffar of Quraysh, he was an imposter because he was not Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. However, 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 to us, that was nafs al -rasul. That is the very self of Rasulullah sleeping in the bed. Salawat ala Muhammad. And how can he not be? How can he not be? When the difficulties came on the house of Abu Talib, Abu Talib, the father of Imam Ali alayhi salatu was salam, when the great difficulties came, the brothers, they came. They said Hamza and Abbas salam, they came to Abu Talib salam, and they said, Ya Abu Talib, Allah was to help you. Allah was to help you. Ja'far, the brother of Imam Ali, he went to live with Hamza, his uncle. The uh, other brother, um, Talib, he went and lived with the uncle Abbas. Where did Imam Ali salatu was salam go? This is not coincidence that Ja'far went to Hamza. Talib went to Abbas. <coughs> Ali ibn Abi Talib went into the lap of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This way there is no question on who is bringing up Imam Ali alayhi salatu was salam. They mentioned already who gave him the name Ali. That is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Who gave him that? And that connection is very great. They say one day, Amir al-Mu'mineen, 
we will tell some stories today. That's it. We will tell the fadail of Ali ibn Abi Talib, which really you can spend years doing and you will never finish. They say that one day Amir al-Mu'mineen, um, he heard a sound. He heard a sound. A ranna, as they say in Arabic. So Rasulullah was there. Amir al-Mu'mineen, he said, Ya Rasulullah, what was that sound? Rasulullah, he said, Ya Ali, innaha ranna to shaytan. It is the cry of the shaytan. Is because of his despair. The cry of the shaitan is, is his despair. He says, Ya Ali, inna ka tasma ma asma, wa inna ka tara ma ara, illa inna ka lasta nabiya. You hear what I hear, Ya Ali. You see what I see, Ya Ali, except you are not a nabi. But everything else you have gotten it from me. Salawat ala Muhammad. Brothers and sisters, this is why there always had to be one in the Ummah, at least one, with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, who was a perfect representation of Iman. Again, there were many Muslims by tongue. There were many Munafiq. Go look at the story of Masjid Darar. Go look at all of the events that happened. And you will see that people said, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. But the Iman had not gone into their heart. And the ayahs of the Quran, Haj Ali can tell you about this, and I'm sure he has already told you, and you know this. That qalat al a'rabu amanna. That the desert Arabs said, they, you will believe. And the ayah says, no, don't say you believe. Say instead that you have submitted. Until the Iman comes into your heart. That is something different. Brothers and sisters, if we are the followers of Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salatu was salam, that Iman must come in our heart and we must show with action. SubhanAllah. That is not during the time of ease. When things are easy, when life is good, I've won the, the lottery, I've got millions of dollars, my life is good, everything is good, it's easy to do anything. But it's when things are difficult, that's when Iman pushes you to work. That's when it, Iman pushes you to do those things you cannot do otherwise. People who have no Iman, they fall. They give up their faith. They give up their aqaid, they give up whatever they believe in, but the believer stays strong and in difficulty pushes. I will give you an example, and inshallah we'll move forward. They say in the ninth year after Hijrah, you all know the history, that the Roman army was now coming into the border areas of Syria, particularly near a place called Tabuk. So now Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, he was so intelligent, he was so smart in every aspect. He had sent people always to monitor what the enemy is doing. And he knew the Romans were coming to attack. He knew the Romans wanted to attack Medina, attack the Muslim frontier. So he said, we must prepare an army. So he sent a, a, a messenger and he made an announcement in Medina that Muslimin get ready to fight. He collected zakat so that they could raise money for the army. Get, uh, their, their asliha, their, their um, their swords and their shields and all of this. Now, the problem was that it was very hot at this time. Medina was experiencing great difficulties. Not only were they experiencing difficulty, but it was the season in which the farmers who were in Medina, they were at the period where they were close to correct, collecting their crops, the fruit and whatever they have. It's close. So nobody, there were many people who did not want to join Rasulullah's army. So when Rasulullah says, get ready, we must form an army to go meet the Romans because they are going to attack us. We must defend ourselves. There were many people who were not prepared. <coughs> One man, he comes to, um, uh, his name was Ja'ad. He comes to Rasulullah, he says, Ya Rasulullah. <coughs> Listen to this excuse he gives. He says, Ya Rasulullah, I've heard that the Romans, they bring their women with them in their army. He says, I am afraid, Ya Rasulullah, that if I go, I will be bewitched by the women, the beautiful Roman women, and I will not be able to fight, I will go to their side. So Ya Rasulullah, just give me a break. Let me stay here in Medina. Summer yeah, it's summer break. Well, that's coming too. <laughs> summer break. Yeah. The Quran, even in Surah <coughs> Tawbah, go look. In Surah Tawbah, it says there were some people who said, Ya Rasulullah, it is too hot for us to go. <laughs> summer break, really, summer break. Uh, it is too hot even for us to go, Ya Rasulullah. The ayah of the Quran says, You think this is hot? Wait for the Nar Jahannam that is waiting. You think it is too hot? There were others 
who were tricked by the hypocrites, by the munafiqeen. This is why I say to you, many had said shahada and were Muslim by name, but they had nifaq inside of them. They were hypocrites. There was a man named Suwaylim. Suwaylim, he was known to be a hypocrite, and what he started to do was scare the Muslims, telling them that, no, 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 don't go with Rasulullah, don't go with Muhammad, because you don't know how big the Roman army is. They will crush you. He started to scare them. He started to scare them. So there were these people, people who were weak. There were also those people who thought, who had some good intention in their heart, who said, um, we want to go with Rasulullah. We would like to go with Rasulullah. However, we would like to wait first and collect our crops before we go. First, we will take our own crops, do our own personal thing, then we will go with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And the Quran talks about three of them. The three companions, who are, are now uh, more interested in getting their crops than following the orders of Rasulullah. And how Allah was so angry, Rasul was so angry with them that upon returning to Medina would not talk to them. And eventually they got forgiveness. So you see all different types of people. People afraid of Roman women, people afraid of the heat, people who are hypocrites scaring others, those who are more interested in themselves before following the orders of Rasulullah. Now there are some others who really want to. There was a man named Malik ibn Qais. Malik ibn Qais, he was away on travels, on business. He came back to Medina after Rasul's army had left. Rasul's army had already left for Tabu. He came after that when he heard about this. He went home, his wife, they say, was, uh, had prepared nice food for him, rest for him because he's coming back from travel. He st stood there looking at it and he would not sit down. She says, why don't you sit down? Malik ibn Qais, he says, how can I sit down? You prepare nice food, shade for me. How can I sit down? She said, is there something wrong, something missing here? You said, not to your liking. She says, no. He said, Rasulullah has gone to fight battle in the name of Allah, and I'm going to sit down and eat. How can I do this? They say he prepared his stuff and he ran after Rasulullah. He went immediately. There were those who wanted to come, those who had true iman inside of them, brothers and sisters. But maybe something was different, but they tried. Malik ibn Qais, he didn't just sit and say, oh, Rasul's gone. That means I'm just going to stay home, right? The time has gone, Rasul left. This is my excuse, I will sit home. No, he said, I am going to go. I am going to do what I have to do. That is Iman. Now they say there are some who, uh, who did even more than that. Abba Adhar. Abba Adhar is something else if you read his history. He, his camel was very weak old camel. So much so that when Rasul's army is moving forward, he fell behind because his, his camel got very sick. He could not go. The army kept going. Abadar got left behind. All by himself. So Abadar saw his camel cannot go. He picked up his things, his supplies and whatever he had on his back and starts to go after Rasulullah. Rasul is gone far. He has to catch up. Rasul is now waiting with the army in a, a place all of a sudden, they see a man coming, the companions, they say, somebody's coming, Ya Rasulullah. He says, don't you know, that's Abadar. Uh, that is Abadar. Abadar comes close. He's got all his water with him. Not a drop has been drank from the water. Rasulullah, he says, Ya Abadar, were you not thirsty? Were you not thirsty? Abadar said, he says, Ya Rasulullah, how can I drink one sip of this water when I'm not sure whether you have had water to drink? He's chasing after Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Brothers and sisters, when you see this behavior, you see that you have gone now above Iman. You've gone above Iman. And you see that there are those who take what Allah, what Allah and His Rasul are going to give. And there are those who will not accept. They will make an excuse. And the ayah of the Holy Quran, it says, There are those people who don't argue with Rasulullah. They listen to what Rasul says. These are the people, they accept whatever Rasul gives. Rasul gives command, they're ready. They don't argue with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Allah has tested their hearts for taqwa. So I said to you, you go above Iman now, Islam low, Iman higher, Taqwa is even higher than that. Because even Al-Imam Al-Rada, when he says, Innamal Iman aftal min al-Islam bi darajah, faith, Iman, 
being a mu'min is better than just being Muslim by name, by one degree. He says, إِنَّمَا التَّقْوَىٰ أَفْضَلْ مِنَ الْإِيمَانِ بِدَانِجَةِ Position of taqwa now. You've gone from iman, your iman is getting stronger and stronger and stronger, and you are having taqwa now. Salawat ala Muhammad. And I read to you these ayahs of the Qur'an that describe, the Surah Al-Furqan that describe that those who they, they hear the zur and, and, and um, they pass away from the frivolity. Those who, when they are reminded by the signs of Allah, they are not blind to them. They are not deaf. They pay attention to the signs of God. The next ayah, it says something very interesting. It says, وَالَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا هَبْلَنَا مِنْ أَزْوَاجِنَا وَذُرِّيَّاتِنَا قُرَّةَ أَعْيُنٍ These are the people, the believers, who say, O oh Allah, give us from our wives, wives, our spouses, and our children, our ذُرِّيَّةَ قُرَّةَ أَعْيُنٍ Qurrata a'yunin is a very hard phrase to describe in Arabic. What is it? Qurrata a'yun. Qurrata a'yun, the ulama, they describe it means coolness for your eyes. When you have a fever, when you are crying a lot from despair or pain or sorrow, your eyes feel hot, right? You feel warmth in your eyes. Now the, the ayah is saying there are people who say, Ya Allah, give from our azwaj and our dhuriya, qurrata a'yun, coolness to, to our eyes. And it says, وَجَعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ imama." Make us amongst the muttaqeen or for the muttaqeen an imam. And the ulama, they explain that this ayah amongst the believers is a beautiful one. Why? Because you and me, all of us, those who are married, soon inshallah the young ones and you as well and have children, you want to have good wives, good husbands amongst you, for the sisters good husbands. You want to have good children who will be a, a source of, of iman and strength for you. But then the ayah also says, وَجَعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ imama." Make us amongst the muttaqeen an imam. Make us an imam amongst the muttaqeen. Now taqwa again, the daraja, taqwa, the position of taqwa. And the ulama, they explain that the mu'min is the one who constantly wants to not only be good himself, but reflect goodness on others. So much so that I see my dear brother Mushtaq, or my dear brother Mustafa, or brother Mahmoud, or brother Dhulfaqar, or brother Irfan, or somebody doing good deeds, I'm watching them doing these good deeds, and I want to do those good deeds too. That's what it means to say, "Ijalna lil muttaqina imam." Allah allow us to be a good example. A mu'min always wants to be a good example. So one day, somebody. Now again, it is not, Quran always has levels of explanation, level upon level upon level of explanation. So one day, somebody asks. Al-Imam Sadiq alayhi salatu wa salam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa alayhi Muhammad. And they say, Ya Ibn Rasulillah, the ayah says, وَالَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا هَبْ لَنَا مِنَ أَزْوَاجِنَا وَذُرِّيَّاتِنَا قُرَّةَ أَعْيُمٍ وَجْعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ إِمَامًا O Allah, make from our wives, our spouses, our children, قُرَّةَ عَيْنٍ Coolness for our eyes and make us an imam for the muttaqin. What is this meaning? He says, no, it is not what you think it means. He says, because when it says azwaj, he's talking about Khadija al -Kubra. When he's talking about spouses, the best of spouses, he's talking about Khadija al -Kubra. And when he's talking about the dhurriya, the, the children, the descendants, he's talking about Fatima to Zahra, And when he says qurrata ayn, the twinkle of your eye, the coolness of your eye, he is talking about Al Hassan and Al Hussein. Al Hassan and Al Hussein, alayhi salam. And he says, when he says, Waja'alna lil muttaqina imama, make us for a imam of the muttaqin, he's talking about Ali ibn Abi Talib, alayhi salatu wa salam. That's why there is one Amir al Mu'mineen. And one Imam al muttaqin yes. You go from Islam to Iman to Taqwa. Once you get to Iman, there is Amir al muttaqin Once you get to Taqwa, there is Imam al muttaqin Instead, Imam al sadiq he says, instead of saying, وَجَعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ imama In the Arabic, the ones who speak Arabic, no. وَجَعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ imama means, make me an Imam amongst the muttaqin Amongst the ones who are pious and fearful of Allah. Instead, Imam al sadiq he says, the meaning for all of you is, وَجْعَلْ لَنَا مِنَ الْمُتَّقِينَ imama." 
make for me one Imam from amongst the Muttaqeen, that is Ali ibn Abi Talib. And you will see again and again those who had Iman and Taqwa and Yaqeen and wanted the satisfaction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala surrounding Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam and those who didn't. Those who were pretenders, those who were hypocrites. And believe me, you see this throughout the history of Islam. Even at Hudaybiyyah, the Treaty of Hudaybiyyah. You know this. I'm sure you have read this and I'm sure I have told you about it. That when the writing of the treaty was taking place, and they wanted to write Rasul's name as Muhammad ibn Abdullah and not Muhammad ibn Rasul or Muhammad Rasulullah, Imam Ali could not write it. He could not, he said, I cannot write that, Ya Rasulullah, because I know you as Rasulullah. That is all I know of you. And you know that the kuffar and the hypocrites, they were always out to defeat Islam, to undermine Islam. However, Rasulullah had with him that support that he needed. And the Holy Quran, when it describes this event, that when the, the, the kuffar were coming with their ignorance and they were coming to undermine Islam and defeat Islam in some way or, or harm Islam in some way, Allah in the Quran, He says, Allah sent His Sakinah on, on His Rasul. He sent His tranquility on His Rasul and on, his, on the believers, on the mu'mineen. وَأَلْزَمَهُمْ كَلِمَةَ التَّقْوَىٰ And he made the believers hold on to the word of taqwa. He had, now this ayah talks about mu'mineen and taqwa. He says he took the mu'mineen and he made the mu'mineen hold on to the word of taqwa. When someone asked the ma'asum, what is this kalimat al-taqwa? What is this word of taqwa? He says, وِلَايَةِ عَلِيَ بْنَ أَبِي طَالِمِ سُبَانَهُمْ هَدَرِي Brothers and sisters, the position of taqwa, when you say, وَجْعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ imama, when you say, Imam al-Muttaqeen, it is not just a spiritual position. That yes, he sits on the mat and all he doesn't know is your actions. It's what your actions demonstrate. They say that one day when uh, Imam was in Iraq, he had stopped in the desert with his, put his tent, and he was in his tent. It was the time of Hajj. And the people who were Hajjaj, they were going from Iraq, from Syria, they were going to Hijaz, towards Mecca and Medina for the Hajj. They knew Amir al-Mu'mineen was there. So Ibn Abbas, he comes into the tent of Amir al-Mu'mineen and, and uh, he sees Amir al-Mu'mineen, he's uh, fixing his sandals. He's preparing his sandals. So Ibn Abbas, he says, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, the people have gathered outside. Um, they want to... Uh, come and pay their respects to you, they want to talk to you, they want to greet you. You know, like a leader, you come out and your people are going to respect you. You see, these days the kings and queens, what do they do? They stand on the balcony and they wait, right? They, so, Ibn Abbas, he says, the people are reading the Amir al-Mu'mineen, they want to pay their respects to you. Amir al-Mu'mineen, he looks up at Ibn Abbas, he says, Ibn Abbas, he says, tell me something, how much do you think my sandals are worth? Ibn Abbas, he says, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, I don't know these matters. Amir al-Mu'mineen, he says, Ya Ibn Abbas, tell me anyways, what do you think? Ibn Abbas, he says, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, maybe one dirham, maybe two dirhams, one or two pennies. Imam Ali alayhi salam, he said, Ya Ibn Abbas, you're being too kind, tell me the truth, what do you really think? Ibn Abbas, he shrugs his shoulders, he says, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, this is really, they have no value whatsoever, you cannot sell them for anything. <laughs> Amir al-Mu'mineen, this is where... There is no one like Ali ibn Abi he, he says, Ya ibn Abbas, these sandals which you said are worthless mean more to me, have more value to me than all of these people outside coming to do whatever they want to do. These sandals have more to me, mean more to me than anything that these people have gathered to do. That's why there is nobody like Ali. Now let's go back to Tabuk, brothers and sisters, and we will finish. I told you the groups in Tabuk. One who is afraid of the Roman women. One, some who are afraid of the heat, cannot take the heat. Some who are hypocrites and scaring the others. Now they say that when Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam makes the army and is ready to move forward, he um, has arranged everything. One thing is missing. Amir al-Mukhanin He is back in Medina. 
He is back in Medina. Rasul says to him, Ya Ali, you have to stay behind. Now they say when this news spreads, the hypocrites, the munafiqeen, the troublemakers, they start to spread the rumor that Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam wa ayadu billah, he has lost faith in, in Ali. He has lost faith in Ali ibn Abi Talib. He, he doesn't think highly of Ali ibn Abi Talib anymore, so he does not want to take him on this expedition to Tabuk to fight the Romans. Now the army is gone. The army is going, it's leaving Medina. They say Imam Ali races after us. He races after Rasulullah because he wants to go. He has been with Rasulullah giving his blood, his body, his every effort for this Rasul and for the religion of Allah. Has he not? Who has done it from the day one other than Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salatu He wants to go. He is ready to give. That is the iman, the taqwa, the yaqeen that is inside of him. Rasul turns to Amir al-Mu'mineen, he says, ila makanika, ya Go back to your place in Medina. He says, Ya Ali, Ya Akhi. He says, Ya Akhi. He doesn't say Ya Ali. He says, Ya Akhi, irja ila makanika. Go back to your place. He says, Fa inna Medina la tasnah illa bi aw bik. Medina will not be safe or secure except if I am there or you are there. Ya Ali. Except if you are there or I am there, Ya Ali, Medina will not be safe. فَأَنْتَ خَلِيفَتِي فِي أَهْلِي You are my Khalifa, Ya Ali. He says, أَمَا تَرْضَى أَنْ تَكُونَ مِنِّي بِمَنْزِلَةِ هَارُونَ مِنْ مُوسَى إِلَّا أَنَّهُ لَا نَبِيَّ بَعْدِي O Ali, are you not satisfied and content that you are to me as Harun was to Musa? Except that there is no Nabi after me? Ali ibn Abi Brothers and sisters, when Rasul had to leave somebody in his bed, he left Ali ibn Abi Talib. And now when he had to leave somebody in Medina to secure Medina, he leaves Ali ibn Abi Talib. Salawat ala Muhammad. Salawat ala Muhammad. Brothers and sisters, you cannot describe the fada'il of Ali ibn Abi Talib. I cannot sit here and speak. But I say to you that live the actions of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Iman, taqwa, yaqeen, the rida of Allah, how he lived his life. That is what will demonstrate you are a mu'min, you are a muttaqi. It will demonstrate who you are, especially in the time of difficulty. Who took care of the orphans and the widows and the poor, the masakin and the fuqara, other than Ali ibn Abi Talib? Who was always there to do the most difficult jobs other than Ali ibn Abi Talib? You see, the young one is now with the strength of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Salawat ala Muhammad. And if I say it, then you don't have to believe me. Because I am nobody sitting with you. But if Rasulullah attests to who is Ali ibn Abi Talib, Oh Ali, you hear everything I hear. And you see everything I see. And your position, Ya Ali, is like the position of nobody else because Rasul says, Lawla anta ya Ali lam yu'arf al mu'minuna min ba'di. O Ali, if there was no you, the mu'mineen would not be known. There would be no indication of where a mu'min is other than you, Ya Ali. Even take, and that's why I say that the love of Ali is what is showing in these poems. In these poems, and these anashid, and these uh, recitations because it is the love of Ali. And I am telling you that it is not just the love of Ali, it is our salvation. Because that is the wilaya of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Brothers and sisters, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. He says, Inna Allah ja'ala li akhi Ali ibn Abi Talib fawa'in la yuhsi adaduha ghayru. Rasul says, Allah has made for Ali for my brother Ali ibn Abi Talib والسلام, certain beautiful qualities, certain excellent qualities that nobody will understand. Nobody can understand their value and how deep they are. فَمَنْ ذَكَرَ فَضِيلَةً مِنْ فَضَائِلِهِ مُقِرًّا بِهَا غَفَرَ اللَّهُ مَا تَقَدَّبَ مِنْ ذَنْبِهِ وَمَا تَأَخَّرُ Whoever reads and recites the fada'il of Ali ibn Abi Talib, Allah will forgive their sins, what were in the past and what are to come. Allah. 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 He says, 
ومن استمع إلى فضيلة من فضائله غفر الله له الذنوب التي اكتسبها بالاستماع Whoever listens to the fadail of Ali ibn Abi Talib, Allah will forgive the sins that they have committed through listening. If you listen to the fadail of Ali ibn Abi Talib, وَمَنْ نَظَرَ إِلَى كِتَابَةٍ فِي فَضَائِلِهِ غَفَرَ اللَّهُ لَهُ الذُّنُوبَ الَّتِي اتَّسَبَهَا بِالنَّظَرِ If you read a fadila of Ali ibn Abi Talib, if you read one of the excellent qualities of Ali ibn Abi Talib, Allah will forgive the sins you have earned by your eyesight. By the mistakes you have made with your eyes set, النظر إلى علي عبادة وذكر علي عبادة. Looking at Ali is a worship, and taking the name of Ali ibn Abi Talib is a worship. Brothers and sisters, this does not make it an excuse that all we do is for Ali, or all we do is read about Ali and say. MashaAllah, MashaAllah, but we go back to living in Jahl. In this difficult time, this time when Islam is being branded as violence by Daesh, by Al-Qaeda, by God knows who, these people who are not people of Islam. You don't call them Muslim, forget about movement, you don't call them Muslim by the things that they do. It is the role of the followers of Ali ibn Abi Talib to now make their voices loud and to show that we will emulate the actions of our Imam. We will live the way our Imam lived. We will treat the poor and the destitute and the weak the way our Imam did. Imam never raised a hand on anybody who could not defend themselves. Imam never took the rights of anybody. Imam never forgot about the poor. Imam never forgot about the orphans. Imam never forgot about the widows. Imam always distributed the wealth. Imam kept nothing for himself. Nothing for himself. Nare Aydari! So allow us, Ya Allah, to be like Amir al Allow us to follow in the path of Ali ibn Abi because that is the path of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. And the path of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam is the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Aqulu qawli hadha. وأستغفر الله لي ولكم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسمك العظيم الأعظم الأعز الجل الأكرم يا الله تنسان يا الله 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 اللهم إنا نسألك وندعوك ونقسم عليك بحق الزهراء وأبيها وبعلها وبنيها والسر المستودع فيها لعن الله وغنيها اللهم شافي كل مريض اللهم رد كل غريب اللهم فك كل أسير اللهم غير سوء حالنا بحسن حالك يا كريم اللهم وفقنا لمراضيك وجنبنا معاصيك وثبت أقدامنا على صراطك المستقيم وخذ بأيدينا إليك يا أرحم الراحمين وفرج عنا يا الله فرجا عاجلا قريبا كلمح البصر هو أقرب من ذلك وافرق علينا الصبر وتوفنا مسلمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا وشفيعنا وحبيب قلوبنا محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين صلى الله عليه وسلم